One thing I was surprised by, because I thought the documentary was going to focus on black Christian, right? I was surprised when um, at the focus on feminism and gender. Why that? Because black people weren't into those kind of things at all. And had they maintained their independence, they would not be into those things now. Why did you guys bring that uh, feminism and gender into it? Well, I mean, I, I think if you ask some of those women who were advocating for uh, a righteous disconsent in the late 19th century, whether, you know, gender identity was important to them, I think they would say yes. Um, so this was not something that we, we made up. This was something that um, emerged out of our research and, and discussions and conversations with the, the scholars and, you know, female pastors and, and, and various folks that this was an important thread that women um, had been the backbone of the black church and may not have necessarily had access to the power positions in the church, whether that's the pulpit or, yeah. or other things, you know, that there existed a stained glass ceiling. And those are not words that I made up. Those were words that were um, shared with us during our research. And so I think it certainly, while um, Black women and myself included, uh, consider their racial identity a very important part of their self-definition. I think there are also a lot of people who have other identities that are important to them, um, whether that's gender, sexuality, class. Um, and so I think it was important for us to uh, reflect, again, that the Black community is not a monolith and that they have a lot of different life experiences that are important to them that they want to see reflected in their in their faith community and in their churches. So was that supposed to be a positive or a negative? Again, not, you know, not there to say whether it's positive or negative, oh, but okay. just to state that this is a reality that a lot of people find important to them and uh, want the church to reflect that those things are interested to them, you know, in, important to them. Um, and so some churches have responded to that and some have not. I got you. Because I noticed the uh, there was an example of a lot of several black female preachers, right? And I know in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, they would never have allowed a woman to be a preacher because they knew that it's not in the woman's nature to lead. Women were created to follow and not to lead, and a man should never follow a woman because every time he does, he suffer. And so they knew the order of God in Christ, Christ and man, man over woman, and woman over children. And there would have been no way that the black men and women would have allowed a woman to be in the pulpit or be a leader because every time you put them in a leadership role, everything goes to hell in a handbasket because it's not in their nature. And so that's why I wonder why the focus on feminism and gender. Well, I would definitely disagree that any time a woman has uh, reached a position of power in the church that uh, it led to, you know, hell in a handbasket. One of the prominent women that we did interview, uh, Vashon McKenzie, who was one of the first uh, female bishops in the AME church, which is one of the original denominations of uh, black Christians in America. And she has been incredibly influential and powerful in transforming that church in the contemporary society. Um, and certainly our interview with Yvette Flunder, who has opened her own church, uh, that she felt like reflects the values of what she believes are important things to consider has also been very important and influential in the community that she opened it. And so we had numerous examples of that in our series. And, um, you know, I think the point that they would make is that uh, women are a sizable portion of the Black church community and have a lot to contribute to that, and that that should be reflected in the positions that they have in the churches. Yeah, I understand that. But if you notice, and you're right about that, the women aren't, quote unquote, taking over right now. But if you notice an AME church and the churches where the women have, the men have allowed the women to take over, they are like weak and feminist and men have stopped going there for the most part. You have some guys that, you know, don't know it about her or just don't care or whatever, but those churches are weak in nature. They don't, they're not strong, masculine, powerful churches because there's no strength. Women don't have strength. You know, they're not, they don't have it because God didn't give it to them. They made them follow. So you're right. They are taking over, 
but it still doesn't work. And I was wondering, was that the point when you brought in this feminine and gender stuff? Was the point to show that their arrival made the black church weak? Yes. No, no, that was not the point we were trying to make. And I think I just expressed that they did not do that. So I think I've answered that question. Why do you say in the good old days that they, the black men and women did not allow women to be preachers or leaders? Why do you think it was then? When men, um, when black was independent? Uh, I mean, I think as, as you know, the people we interviewed said that it reflected uh, their embrace of the patriarchal system in which they existed. Yeah. And so, you know, the, whether that was inside the black church or not, uh, they were reflecting the patriarchy that existed in America at that time. You know, at the time that that men had these prominent positions, women uh, did not have the right to vote. <laughs> you know, they did not have a lot of the rights that they have now. And so. Uh, that's that was a reflection of that time. Right. And, uh, I don't think that is the time that we are in right now. And so I think the church has revolved to, evolved to reflect that. Nor would you know now, because you learned a lot, do you agree that when women were, do you agree that women should not be preachers and it was a mistake? No, I don't agree. I don't agree with that at all. Oh, you don't? No, I don't agree with it. I'm surprised because I, I thought you would see both sides, the strong and the weak, right? Do you Have you noticed, though, since they became preachers and they got the right to vote, that the, the world going to hell in a handbasket? Because there are more women than there are men, and things are getting worse instead of better. No, I don't agree with that. Oh, you so, don't really? No, I don't. But, but then you notice the the difference between the strength of black folks before all this other stuff happened and the weakness of them now? I don't know if I would categorize it or characterize it as strength or weakness. Um, I, I would say that uh, I think, of course, when the black church was operating as an ind independent institution uh, during the Jim Crow era, it had a lot of control and a lot of influence over the community when that was all the community had. Um, and I think certainly post civil rights movement and when you have this period of integration where there are a lot of places that African Americans of all stripes can go to get some solace beyond just the, the confines of their community, then, then that, that influence is going to wane. Oh. Uh, but I think what we have found is that when periods of, um, of, of, horrible things that have happened in this community and when people need to rally around each other, they have. Okay. Another thing that I can't wait to hear you point on this, I wish I had been there with you taping this, but thank you for the documentary, really. I saw a lot. Um, the one thing I know for sure, in the good old days before the civil rights movement and all that, uh, you, brought, you guys brought in same-sex marriage. There was... Uh, uh, the series also support homosexuality within the church. There was a rapper by the name of Jonathan Walton, and he said that black churches have always included homosexuals at every phase. He said there's a, there is a don't ask, don't tell policy. Um, I know that there have always been homosexuals and lesbians and all that around because of sin. And, and if someone was in that fallen state, it was hidden because they knew it was a shame, and the church would show them how to overcome it, right, by causing, by pointing them out to be born again. But um, it was never accepted as a good, and it wasn't talked about and promoted as a good. It was a sense of shame to be in that fallen state. Do you agree with uh, him that the black church is always included, or you know that that's not true? Um, I mean, I think they have always included because there have always been folks who had a spectrum of sexualities that exists within the black community. So, but you, uh, went, you didn't no. know about it, though. You didn't preach about it. You, you, they call it sin, and they were showing them how to overcome it. They knew it was a wrong. It was a shame. So they taught them how to overcome it rather than coming out of the closet or accepting it as something good. That's why black I mean, people are decent people. Yeah. Well, 
uh, I don't I don't characterize that as the good old days. I mean, I think that certainly was a period where people didn't feel like they could freely express themselves. And certainly the society has uh, transformed and evolved since then. And so folks uh, who feel that way want to be able to be all of who they are, uh, especially within something as intimate as their religious and faith practices. And so that was something that we felt like was an important theme to raise in the series. Was that an amazing thing for you to discover? Because during those days, black people knew that being a homosexual or being a drug addict or being a lesbian or being a whatever, it wasn't who you were. It's just that you have fallen away from God and Satan was your daddy and you took all his, his... I don't agree with that statement at all. You didn't notice I that? Agree. I don't agree with that statement at all. No, that's the way it was in the good old days before I, the I civil... don't agree with that statement at all. What do you mean by I don't that? I agree with that statement at all. What, what do you mean? Was there something that says I'm wrong by that in that? I, I don't agree with the statement that uh, that is a sinful thing and that they were um, taught that that was a sinful thing. I don't agree with that. No, statement. they would never. There's no way you were coming out of a closet or promoting. Black people were even ashamed of having children out of wedlock in those days. If a woman got pregnant, she would have to go to Indiana somewhere until she had that baby or stay in the house, right? Because blacks had a higher sense of morality and respect for what was right. But once the civil rights movement came, they lost that. And that's part of their suffering now. Did you notice that change? I can't say that, no. You had, in the documentary, uh, you covered a lot of controversial figures such as Marcus Garber, Garvey, Jeremiah Wright Jr., and James Cone. James Cone is the one that came up with the black liberation theology thing, right? Yes. What is your what 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 impression did you have from the black liberation theology theory to in comparison to real Christianity? In comparison to real Christianity? Yes. What do you mean? Because real Christianity is not about your color. It's not about male or female. It's about the spirit. We are a spirit, created image of God. And black knew that at one time, so they went into the color thing. You know, this guy, uh, James Combe, who was really brought in, too, by Jeremiah Wright Jr., were into the color thing. How did you feel with those two difference, differences? Well, my understanding of black theology and black liberation theology as expressed by James Cone was that it was an effort to— um, to bring the the faith that had driven the um, work of the civil rights movement with the emerging black power, um, yeah, you know, theology not theology but black power ideology that didn't necessarily see itself as part of a faith tradition, and so it was a effort to blend both of those things and both of those aspects of the black community that were expressing themselves. Oh, I see. At that point in time. So it's more about a black movement than about God himself. I think it's about all of those things. Amazing. You, you guys even brought in Michael Brown. The series included a discussion of Ferguson and Michael Brown. But Michael Brown was a bad example for black people. Am I right? I don't agree with that. Oh, you know? <laughs> I don't. Why not? What is? I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that statement at all. But there was nothing Christian about Michael Brown or his family. But I don't, does that mean that someone who's not Christian deserves to be murdered in the middle of the street? I mean, I don't. I don't understand that question. I mean, if you run out and attack a cop, you deserve what you get, right? Uh. I don't have an answer for that. Okay. I, mean, I, I will just say that I do have a conflict at 4.30, so I don't know if you have one more question. 